Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This morning I'm in Freehold, New Jersey, and we're gonna be upgrading the service here. Well, actually just the panel change because we have an underground service, 200 amps right here. So I haven't opened this up yet. Fortunately, it's not locked. That's good. We got a permit. The permit took about eight or nine days to get approved. It's approved. And this is the old push matic panel we're gonna be changing. It's right here. We've seen these before. So this one obstacle is below me, this Verizon box. I might have to move that down. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I'm probably gonna move it over if I can, but it's got this all hooked up onto it. So we'll see what we do. But right now we're gonna open up this panel, see what's going on in here. Make sure we have all the breakers uh, so we can figure out the rest of the day. I'd say this house was built in the late 60s. Somewhere in time, for, what I understand though is all copper wires here. All right, so that's just central air conditioning. These double poles, these are double pole perkers here. See the red and the black here? That's a 30 amp dryer. There's another 30 amp, I don't know what that's for. And then, uh, this looks like a double pole circuit as well. Double pole 20. And then we got one, two, three, four, five. Well, this is a double pole circuit too. So really not too many circuits here, but these are the single poles and these are the double poles right here. The singles are push in just like that. The doubles got these on the bottom like that. So on these pushmatic load centers, the double pole circuits, you could say the push portion is horizontal and the single poles are vertical. So like with any retrofit, you're always concerned about how this pa new panel is gonna go in. And we know that we can't have any overcurrent protective devices. Those are circuit breakers, whether they're individual, single pole, double pole, or main breakers, three pole, whatever the case might be. You cannot have any overcurrent protection device higher than six feet, seven inches. So once I realize where this hole is and where the panel is going to go and where the main breaker is going to be, I'm gonna turn around here, reach for my tape measure, and I'm gonna to measure to six feet, seven inches, so I know where that is on the panel, or on the wall, I should say, and then I can figure out that, you know what, I don't need to move this box. All right. There's my 78 inch mark right here. So that's the top of my panel. All right, so we got set screws again here. We got to get some screw. This thing's barely even screwed in there. What the hell's going on? This meter enclosure, the only thing that was holding it there in place was the nipple between the meter here and the panel on the other side. I figure I secure it to the house while I'm working on it so I can disconnect the service entrance conductors. But look how they used to double up their neutrals. I mean, get as many as you can under one terminal there. Nowadays, that's a disaster. And the reason why that's a disaster is because the neutral is a current carrying conductor. And so we don't want to have any chance of arcing or making a solid connection to the terminal. If there's only one conductor per terminal per circuit breaker, the same should be said for the neutrals. And so that change came I want to say the 2002 cycle, maybe, maybe the 2006 or 2005, I should say. I'm not sure. If you know, let me know in the comments. So next up is to remove all the old wiring and cables. It's mostly uh, non-metallic sheath cable for here. In fact, I don't think there's any armored cable here at all, which made uh, a little easier getting the home runs, getting these circuits back into the new panel. But first, we got to take the old ones out 
and remove this old main breaker enclosure. So this is where my day takes a turn for the worse. Uh, you're, what you're about to see is a true encounter and something that really. This part is hard for me to watch, even though I did this job two week, two or three weeks ago. It. But as you can see, I get the first lug off of the first load side ungrounded conductor, and now I'm doing the neutral, and the lug comes off, the conductor comes off, no issues. Uh, but the big surprise is about to happen. I know what happens, and it's a very empty feeling knowing what could be. For the rest of the day here and um, I wouldn't say it was the worst outcome but it wasn't the greatest outcome but what am I gonna do it happens and uh, you know well here you go ah uh, fuck off Okay, so I just got off the phone with JCP and now they created a work number. Uh, so they got a crew coming out here sometime today. As you saw when I was working on the meter, the bottom lug broke. So we're probably, they're probably gonna come here and turn off the power and replace the meter. There's that broken lug. See? What are you gonna do? Fortunately, somebody's able to come out right away. Uh, otherwise, there's no way to restore power or full power, you'd only have one leg of 120 volts. So once they come out and they shut off at the uh, transformer, which I assume is that green box down by the street there, uh, they'll shut that down. Then they'll be able to work on this and replace the guts or replace the whole enclosure. I'm not sure what they're gonna do. Uh, so stand by. In the meantime, we're gonna keep working on the panel and get that, get that up and running. So what wound up happening was JCP and L came out Probably about 45 minutes later, it was a lineman, he was a couple of years younger than me. The guy worked his way up as an electrician and got lucky and got this job with the utility company, Jersey Central and Power and Light, They're run by First Energy. Anyhow, he told me he could shut the power down, that's no problem, but I would have to pay a fee to have him come back to turn it back on, unless that gave him the work number. That's what I was told. So I had a work number, I called JCP&L when I was done, and nobody came out. They also told me that they would not be providing the meter. So at the last minute there, I had to run over to an electrical supply house and get the underground meter, which fortunately they had, and I was able to keep going. So at this point, I was pretty worried about JCP and L coming out and re-energizing the transformer. This, is, um, this couple found me here on YouTube uh, to do this work, and I went out and met with them, and we agreed upon the work, and they agreed on our first meeting, and so... Once we agree on an amount, I collect a deposit and I put together the permit package and then I wait for the building department to call me to tell me that the permit's ready to go. So that's exactly what we did here. Uh, but the point of that of this is that these people were senior citizens and I had broken the lug on the meter. Total accident, totally unavoidable, I guess. It's just old equipment and that's what happens with old equipment when you're trying to do a, um, an upgrade such as this. And so I had to address the issue, but most of this work 
wasn't dependent upon what I could do. I bought the new meter, I wired the new meter, and now I was just waiting on JCPNL to come back out and energize the transformer so that we could restore power to the house. And what wound up happening was, once I installed the meter, which you'll see in a little while here, the meter was installed, it was ready to go, but then JCPNL didn't come out. And now I was done with the job at around six o'clock and they still hadn't come out. So I wound up taking a break for dinner and I got myself some Chick-fil-A, which I love. And uh, I wound up calling JCPNL back to see what was going on with the, um, the return trip to re-energize the transformer or at the transformer, resupplying my line side to my meter that you'll see later that I installed. And they just couldn't guarantee me a time. Uh, so I really became worried that here I was just doing a job, trying to upgrade an electrical service, and I wound up leaving them with no power, two senior citizens with no power after having no power all day while I upgrade the service. So I was really feeling frustrated at the time. Uh, as it turns out, I explained to them what the, what the problem was, and they seemed to be very understanding, which I'm very grateful for. And they told me, Ron, we understand it's not in your hands, and there's nothing you can do. We've got to wait on GCPNL. And so I went home like that with no power at this house after upgrading the service all day long. A long story short, this customer wound up calling me around 8 o'clock, and they, they had went out to dinner themselves to the diner. And when they came back from the diner, uh, JCPNL was at the front yard of the house and was about ready to energize, re-energize the service. One part of the story that I mixed, missed, though, is that I called the building department to see what they could do because JCPNL says, listen, we need an approval before we can energize this service, even though it was energized for 50 years before I got there. The inspector in Freehold Township, I, I cannot say enough good things about him, he came right out within like 10 minutes of my calling him to look over the work that I was doing, approve what I was doing so that I could get the power restored in a short amount of time. And so I can't say enough about the inspector Paul in Freehold Township. Thank you. I don't know if you watch these videos or if somebody watching these videos knows Paul, but that was a very noble thing to come out that quickly. I'd never had an inspector respond that quickly like that. I, just, I couldn't believe it. It was actually happening. And uh, without that happening, then JCPNL would have left these people in the dark. Or rather, you could look at it as I might have left these people in the dark, which I had a hard time dealing with until I got the call at 8 o'clock that JCPNL had re-energized the service. Yeah, hey, Paul, Ron Piscina, Classic Electric here. I got a permit pulled on an underground electric service, yeah. and I'm upgrading the panel on the inside from 100 amps to 200 amps. When I pulled the meter, um, one of the lugs inside the meter enclosure broke off, so I called JCPNL to come out and do a shutdown so I can replace the meter enclosure. And now JCPNL is telling me they cannot re-energize the service after the repairs are made unless they have a cutting card and an inspection. I'm ready for an inspector to come look at it, but I've never come across this before and I don't want to leave these people with no power tonight. So how, how can we proceed here? What's the DR number? Uh, the DR number, I don't have a DR number, I just have a permit number. No, you gotta call the power company and get a DR number. Is, are they still there? Yeah, they're still here. Yeah. And ask them what the DR number is. Do you have a DR, no, DR number for this? No. Or a number. So this is going to end up being an emergency des uh, DNR for this situation. I just got off the phone with my foreman. This is okay. an emergency. Because of the situation, what happened, it's an emergency. So we're not even going to, as far as I know, we're not going to have a DNR number for it. All right. So in, if he's ready for inspection, I'll come out there right now. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem, Ryan. I'll see you in a few minutes. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. You got it. I wound up getting very lucky to have them come back at 8 o'clock at night. I really was convinced after my call at dinner time that they weren't going to come back out for like a day or two and that it wasn't an emergency. But you heard it was an emergency. Even the guy from JCPNL says his foreman said this is an emergency. That's why there's no DR number, no DNR number, et cetera, et cetera. It's crazy. The lesson I've learned from this job is from now on, whenever I do a job in JCPNL territory, I'm going to ask for a DR number. Now, I've, I should have known this, and I've run into this problem before, but I never made it a, uh, an issue or, or men, never made it something that I decided I'm going to do no matter what when I work on a JCPNL 
utility property here. So from now on, when I call, whether or not the building department requires the DR number or not, once I get that permit number, I'm going to call JCPNL and get a DR number. So if this ever happens again, I'm covered because I never want to go through that again. I've never actually had that happen to me before. Now, it's one thing if you're changing the meter and you break it, but I wasn't planning on changing the meter here. Uh, this underground service, a lot of times we leave the meter as it is, unless it's in terrible condition and we need to change it. We just go ahead and change the main breaker panel and leave the existing meter enclosure there. Okay guys, so it's a little bit after three now and the broken meter, there was a pain in the neck problem. Uh, obviously I gotta own it and that's exactly what I did, I owned it. And I called JCPNL to tell them of my problem. Fortunately, we have a permit taken out of here so I had a, a permit number because without that nothing's gonna happen, okay? And you're not gonna get the permit without a license unless you own the property. So let this be a lesson anybody doing side jobs out there. If you're gonna mess up something on the utility side you need help, you're not gonna get it without a permit. Okay, so I called the building department and the building department came out in 10 minutes, approved it, left me a sticker so when the other crew comes out to reconnect, who I'm waiting for now, they're gonna see that the, uh, there's no cutting card because it was an emergency service from what I understand. That's a DNR number. I'm not so familiar with that side of it between the inspector, or rather the building department and the utility company. So there's the licensed electrician, there's the building department, then there's utility company, and there's the owner. So it's a big whirlwind. Uh, they just want to make sure that they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's. So I'm waiting for JCPNL to come back now and reconnect at the transformer to liven up my new meter. Here is the new meter. Or rather, here's the new meter enclosure. Okay, and there's the approval for a reconnect, which uh, I gotta be honest, I was very grateful for. A lot of times, stuff like that, that could take, you know, days, just crazy. Sometimes you get immediate answers or replies and sometimes you don't get them for a while so i'm very lucky that uh, the building department and the electrical inspector i feel like they're on my side today which is great and the utility was willing to help too so it's not always like that so i'm very grateful all right so uh since then we got the new meter in the panel's done i'm gonna show you all that in a second but since i'm out here battery died while i was recording uh doing the grounding rods here but here they are, so you get a good idea of what I did. This one here, and these ground rods are supposed to be six feet apart. I understand some people like to do it further apart than that. I was watching a video the other day of some guy doing ground rods, not an electrician, and he's based them 20 feet apart. I don't know what the benefit of that is. Anyhow, so uh, the first ground rod, the second ground rod, and as you can see, you guys left them in my comments that I was doubling up on that ground rod clamp. So I no longer do that. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to go straight up beside the underground conduit into my grounding bridge. And then right underneath the meter is where I drilled my hole. And I'm going to fill that in with some duct seal momentarily. On the other side here, we have our steel nipple that we installed, a new 2-inch with the bonding bushing. So this bonding bushing, I, I think I did a short video on it, a 250 TAC 92. This bushing actually bonds this nipple because it's service equipment, it needs to be separately bonded. So it's a part of the grounding system. And then it goes to this lug. And the reason why I gotta put the lug in is because these lugs on the ground bar here, in the neutral bar, they're only good for up to number six. Okay, and I got number four copper there which is what we're looking for as far as the service bonding jumper here, which is what this is here. Alrighty, there's my surge protection. I've read the directions on these. It does not need to be up at the top here. Eaton does not specify anywhere to put it inside the panel. So I put it there. Um, so the main breaker's off. I gotta put these covers on. And then we gotta, uh, I got a couple extra holes up here that I made in the knockouts. I'll cover those up with connectors for later on. And we'll have to knock out the, the spacers 
the breaker uh, locks inside the panel here, the spacers, <laughs> the knockouts for the circuit breakers, I should say. And then the last thing we need to do is run our number two aluminum across the garage ceiling here, okay? And into this room, and behind this room here, behind this wall, is the water meter. And then we'll be able to uh, start labeling our panel, and uh, we'll be all set. And I'm hoping that JCP and L is there, is here, before I leave so they can energize the service tonight. If you're still here watching towards the end of this video, thank you. I appreciate you watching these videos. Please leave any comments, questions, or answers, or jokes in the comments section. Uh, but one of the last things I had to do here before I was finished for the day was to run this number two aluminum from the main breaker panel here over to the water main. Now, you can see me running the wire across the garage doors here and attaching it to the ceiling. But what I don't see and what I did not record was the actual footage of me bonding the copper water pipe, the copper water main. And the reason why I didn't do that, it was very uh, dark. I had my headlamp on. But there's really no place to set up the camera. It was just a small room. So you're going to have to take my word for it that it was done correctly. I probably could have taken a picture of it and posted it here. But I don't have that footage, unfortunately. Again, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Please do that. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. So... As I previously mentioned, JCP&L did come out that night at around 8 p.m. to energize the service, which was great. So the people had power. I came back about a week later to identify all the circuits and finish up a couple last-minute things I needed to do to finish. And there's the finished product. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, and we'll see you on the next one.